And hand over to Mr. Burgess. Hand over to Mr. Burgess. Good morning, uh, Year 7. Um, I'm here to talk to you about behaviour and standards today. Um, as you know, are probably aware, the members of staff around the room are responsible for your well-being and your progress in Year 7. Myself and Mr. Wells are actually in charge of everything else. So everything else that you're not learning, myself and Mr. Wells are in charge of. Okay? So I'm going to talk to you about a few things um, that you might know already. I'm going to talk to you about a few things you won't know about. It's just about procedures. Now, I've done this assembly for the other four year groups, uh, the other four houses, sorry, in this school, uh, and they know all this. So you guys are new. I'm going to talk to you about attendance first, okay? Now, if you're off sick, your parents have got to phone in on the first day off that you're sick and every other day. We don't know if you knew that already. Right up in the air. Okay, so lots of you do. Okay? Now, as students of this school, you need to know how this school works more than your parents. Because you come here. So if you have a day off, you must say to your mum or your dad or whoever you live with, you need to phone the school today, tell them I'm not going to phone. Okay? Obviously if you're too ill, you stay in bed and you should know. Okay, but on each and every day. Now if your parents don't do that, it's against the law. Did you know that? Be had if you knew that if your parents didn't phone in, it was against the law. So some less people. Okay, let's look at these hands up and hands down. Who knows that if I drive my car in a 30 mile an hour zone at 40 miles an hour, who knows that that's breaking the law? Okay, be hands down. Who knows if I lock a dog in a room and don't feed it for two weeks and don't let it out? Who knows that's against the law? Okay. So you know lots of laws and lots of things that are right and wrong, but not a huge amount of stuff about this. Now, if, you're, if you have four days off of school in a four-week period, okay, if you have four days off in a four-week period and we don't get any reasons for that, that's breaking the law as well. Okay? What would happen to me if I drove my car too fast for 30 miles an hour? Yes, you know. Okay, I get a ticket, so I get a criminal record, and I get fined, okay? That's exactly the same as what would happen with attendance. You'd get a letter, you'd have to go to a magistrate's court, and you'd get a fine to start with. What did you have your hand up for your hand up? Yes, exactly right. You also get points on your license that go against you. Mariana. Ah, now that's interesting. If it's really, really, really bad, they could take you to trial. Now, all of those things are exactly the same as the process <coughs> surrounding attendance. Yes, you know. That's right. Exactly right. And that's not just a few years ago, that's right now. So what this, what this young man has said is if you skive off school, your parents can get into trouble and have to go to court and have to go to prison. That's still the same. Okay? So if we just look at here, four weeks in a four, uh, four days in a four week period, your parents must tell you, uh, tell us where you are every day if you're not in school. Now, over the last five years, the improvements in staff attendance in this school are amazing. Your teachers are very rarely off now. So from an attendance point of view of this school, staff attendance is outstanding. Student attendance so we need people to get in and be here. Now, you as a year group, your attendance started off fantastic. 100% the first three days, 98% the next week, 97% the week after that, and then it's gradually going down. Okay? Now, it's about resilience. It's about toughening up. And if you wake up in the morning and feel a bit rough, Get yourself dressed and come into school. Because if you then, once you've broken that and once you're actually in school, you may feel a lot better. But if you sit at home and lay in bed and go, oh, I don't like it, then you've got a problem. Okay? It's about toughening it up. Number three on here is on September 1st, the government said no longer are your parents allowed to take you out of school for a holiday. Okay? Now, 
that's the law. The government changed the law. So if your parents take you out of school for a holiday, they're breaking the law. Now there is one reason they can take you out, and that's for an extenuating circumstance. That's a fantastic excuse, but they have to write me a letter to tell me what that fantastic excuse is. Bolton. Well, that may well be in the previous school and before the 1st of September, but that's not even taken into account anymore. The government said you cannot do it. Okay, so before in your primary schools or your middle schools, you may have been said, if you've got 100% attendance, then we'll let you go. Just put your hands down, we'll ask questions as well. Okay. The last, um, oh, that's not, I've not changed that to value, uh, that's going to be a seven. Um, magic 100, okay? In the first 100 days of school, so you get one to 100, one day off is worth 1%. So if you get to the end of the Magic 100 and you have one day off, you'll be on 99% attendance. In the early stages of the term, if you have one day off, so say you have one day off in the first full week, okay? One day off in the first full week will give you 80% So, in the early stages of the term, when we're doing everything new, attendance is massively important. Now, on Monday, I'm going to give Mr. Wells and your fortunes a whole list of things, uh, of your attendance on a weekly basis. Okay? Now, what we're going to also do then, is in your planner, you will be getting new planners soon as well, because the other ones are a little bit naff and they're falling apart, but we're going to get new ones with a spiral that doesn't work. In your new planners, you're going to get a list of your attendance over the weeks, and we're going to ask you to check, put it in there so that you can check your attendance. Your personal attendance. And then we're going to have a little competition amongst the fours to see which four has got the best attendance. And at the end of the half term, you might get a couple of celebrations in full time. Okay? So it's all about you guys making sure that your attendance is as high as possible. Now the other thing that I've took um, myself, Mr. Wells, and Mr. Glacier to look at on a daily basis is uniform and equipment. Now, genuinely, year seven equipment and uniform is good. Okay? But these sorts of things we see all of the time in school. Skinny jeans, leggings, and short skirts. Okay? Skinny jeans, if I was stood here in a pair of skinny jeans, people would look at me and think, oh, I think you're a little bit bad. If I stood here in leggings, they would know I'm <laughs> Okay? It's about wearing the right thing for the right job. Now, all of your colleagues around the room, all of your tutors around the room, all of my colleagues around the room, are dressed smartly. I am dressed like this today because I'm teaching PE. I normally wear a suit. Okay? So we expect you to look smart, because we look smart. Now, girl, this is. Boys, you're allowed to wear a skirt if you really want to, but I wouldn't advise it, because it's quite cold. But girls, short skirts. It's a very, un, uh, this is a very old-fashioned thing, but it's something that myself and Mrs. Uh, Wake have discussed lots of times. If you, when you're at home, kneel on the floor and your skirt does not touch the ground, it's too short, okay? We've got lots of stairs in this school, and short skirts and stairs equal no go. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. But after half term, we're going to be looking for people with short skirts, and we're going to be sending your parents a letter to say, a knee length skirt or trousers. No excuses. Now these other things, if I had these, if I had big dangly ears like that with a big hole in it, I might look a bit silly. Now I know it's fashion, and I know there's some members of staff in the school that have ear stretchers, spikes, uh, nose piercings. But when they come to school, they take them out because they're coming to work and they're coming here to do a job. Now you guys are coming here to do a job, and that is to get an education so you get a good job at the end. Okay? So ear stretchers, don't do it. It hurts for a start. And when you've finished having a big hole in your ear and it's all dangling, do you know what they have to do? 
they cut it off. They cut your dandy bit off, and then you're left with half an earlobe. Or, what they can do is, inside your ear structure, they cut just inside, and take the skin off inside, and they sew it shut. But then you're always like stuck by us. Now, I don't know about you, but I value my earlobes because they're useful for balancing in peer lessons. Okay? If you haven't got them, you're going to look a bit silly. It's like having no eyebrows. You look a bit silly with no eyebrows. I saw a really good picture of One Direction with no teeth and no eyebrows. They look a lot different. Okay, the last thing, unnaturally coloured hair. Okay, unnaturally coloured hair. There are five types of hair. Okay, blonde, red or auburn, black, brown, and transparent, like mine. <laughs> now you can have any one of the first four, I would assure you that you don't want the same hair colour. Because at this time of the year, it is very cold. So you can have black hair, blonde hair, red hair, or brown hair. And a blonde person can have brown hair if they choose, or a person with black hair can have blonde hair if they choose. But what we don't want to see is bright green hair. Those people that are similar age to me, about 35, you will remember somebody called rock bags. We don't like rock bags hairstyles. We don't like blue hairstyles. We don't like curly hairstyles. And that is because we are in a smart and business environment. Erin. There is normally a girl with good blue hair. She's no longer attending the school in two weeks. She's going somewhere else. Ow! Okay. Right. Yes, because she's got blue hair. The end. No need to talk about it. She's got blue hair. She doesn't want to change it. She can't stay here. She's got to go. Okay. Right, just to check then, Greg's lunch is a little bit different for you guys. Okay, Greg's lunch is a little bit different for you guys because you have a separate, um, you have a separate playground and field area. But just to remember, there's no access to the fields of breaks and lunches unless otherwise instructed. Mr. Wells will tell you that. Only people who play football are allowed on the school field. Don't play football on the normal school football pitch because we rent them out. Okay, we rent them out. And the grass is being rubbed down. And it's so they're not hiring a football pitch, they're hiring a mud park. It's not good. And just remember that the out of bounds areas, you shouldn't be up near the pond. Okay? <coughs> and you should only be on your seven uh, playground area in your uh, year seven field. If you're not on there, you're quietly sitting in the atrium in your lunch, or you're sat up on the year seven stairs. You can go and the seat as well, of course, but you need a pass. Now, all of that information comes together to be an ordered situation, okay? We have to have rules and we have to have order for you to be successful. If you don't have it, it goes mad. Now, the last thing I'm going to say to you is about today. Today, when it rains or when it's windy, some children go crazy and their behaviour fluctuates. Now, at the moment, in lesson one and two, your behaviour's been good, but it's going to need to continue to be good at break times and at lunch time. So I don't want to hear people screaming and shouting. I don't want to see people running around. 